sure that you can. How about now? Can you hear me now? Yeah? Let me fix my camera. Hey, Miss Yessie, good to see you. Hey, Arthur, can you hear me now? Let me turn on my cell phone so I can see the program as well. Hey, Miss Patty. Nice to see you guys. Okay, good. So you can hear. Welcome back. Welcome back to episode 29 of the Immigrants Bridge Show. My name is Attorney B from the Bennett Law Center, the BLC crew. And I'm very, well, maybe not so excited to share some immigration news with you guys. Um, but of course, I really want to make sure that you stay informed and have knowledge about what is going on in the world of immigration law. So tonight we're going to talk about some proposed fee increases in the world of immigration. Of course, if you have regular immigration questions, go ahead and um, drop them in the comments and I will give you that information as we go along. Hey, Ms. Nieves. Hey, Sefton. Nice to see you. Uh, Mauricio, nice to see you. Hey, Miss terri Nice to see you. Bienvenido a todo. Soy la abogada B del Centro del Bennett Law. Um, eso es uh, la programa que se llama La Puente de los Inmigrantes. Y estoy muy alegre para estar aquí contigo. Um, hoy voy a um, decir unas noticias de, del mundo de inmigración um, que yo pienso que ustedes necesitan saber. So, la única regla que yo tengo es que si usted está aquí con, con nosotros, si usted pone, pone o dice hola en los comentarios, so yo puedo saludar a ustedes, ¿ok? También, si ustedes tienen preguntas generales del mundo de inmigración, por favor, pone su preguntas en los comentarios también. Ok, so um, let me go ahead and pull up my information here. How's everybody doing? ¿Cómo es todo? Hello, Miss Tammy. Hola, Tammy. Bienvenidos. Um, let me make sure I have this information. Of course, I was trying to print and then my printer decided it wanted to run out of paper. Okay. So anyone have any questions? ¿Alguien tiene preguntas? You like my hair? Got my hair cut back. <laughs> Hola, Mercedes. Mercedes is the mean queen. She is my favorite Mexican next to Jesus. Jesus Alvarez, mi otro favorito. Um, okay, so definitely I'm going to share some updated information in the world of immigration. It looks like things are starting to open back up again, so I'm going to give you some dates to look out for. And as promised, I'm also going to talk about the fee increases that are going to be occurring probably sooner rather than later. Again, if you have questions, please go ahead and drop them in the comment box uh, and we will go from there. So, otra vez, yo voy a decir información sobre los trámites de inmigración que va a cambiar um, pro probablemente muy pronto. Uh, también hay más noticias nuevas y yo voy a decir algunas fechas que ustedes pueden tener en mente. Hey, Attorney J, nice to see you. Hola, Juan. How you doing, Juan? Nice to see you. Thank you for joining us. And remember, please go ahead and share this broadcast um, to your pages so that other people um, can be aware and get this information also. So también, por favor, compartir ese programa en sus páginas so otras personas también pueden beneficiar de la, in, de la información. Hey, Regina. It's nice to see you. Wonderful attorney. Hola, Antonio. Bienvenidos. 
Okay, so first of all, let's talk about what in the immigration world is actually opening up. So June 4th, so pretty soon next week, um, USCIS, the regular local field offices, they are reopening as of June 4th. So that is pretty exciting news. So what does that mean? It means that they will be scheduling. I'm looking for my notes here that I printed out. They're going to be scheduling appointments that were canceled. So if you had um, a citizenship interview and test schedule, those will be prioritized. If you had a green card interview or a marriage-based interview, those are going to get rescheduled first. Um, for asylum applications, they're going to restart those asylum applications as well. Also for oath ceremony. So if you already had done your citizenship exam and, and you've passed and you are ready to be sworn in, those naturalization ceremonies will be taking place as well. So of course, immigration is going to be following social distance guidelines. So whereas before, you know, if you've been into a local field office, you know that these places will be full, but they're really um, going to stick to social distancing. So we're not going to see the amount of interviews that we would normally see, but at least they're starting to get back on schedule. So también yo voy a decir eso en español, um, que inmigración lentamente está reabriendo. So, esa es buenas noticias para personas que están esperando las citas. So, por ejemplo, personas que tenía entrevistas de, de matrimonio o residencia, ellos van a dar otras citas, especialmente si la cita fue cancelado. So, esos son las personas que va a recibir citas primeramente. Las personas que tenía citas cancelados y solamente estoy hablando de inmigración local las oficinas locales ok no estoy hablando de los consulados nada así solamente las oficinas aquí en los Estados Unidos local so entrevistas de matrimonio entrevistas de uh, de residencia entrevistas de asilo también um, entrevistas y exámenes de ciudadanía. También ellos van a recomendar, uh, um, ellos van a dar nuevas citas a las personas que tenían las citas cancelado. So esas es buenas noticias, especialmente um, para personas esperando la cere um, ceremonia de naturalización. So personas que tienen que tomar um, un juramento. Um, ellos también puede obtener otras citas nuevas para ser ciudadana, ciudadanas americanas. So, eso es buenas noticias. También, aparte de inmigración regular, um, también el departamento que hace las huellas uh, van a reabrir también. So, yo voy a explicar en inglés y después voy a dar más información en español. Hello, Miss Irma. Miss Rosie, Shani is on, Miss Daphne. Hey, Echo, nice to see you guys. Thank you for tuning in. Um, so the other thing that I started to share in Spanish was that the application support centers are also reopening a little bit slower than regular immigration, but they are reopening as well. So the application support centers are the, um, the area of immigration that deals with your biometrics and your fingerprints. So um, they are starting to be able to process cases again. So the first thing we know is that they're going to start reopening in July at 30% capacity. In August, they'll move up to 40% capacity. And in September, they will move up to 50% capacity. That's all the information um, that we have so far, but they do have plans to uh, keep the agencies open as we know it. So, en español, hey, Dion, nice to see you. Hey, Sue, hey, Miss Charlotte, hey, Chrisanne, nice to see you. Hey, Maggie, good to see you. 
Um, so, en español, le estoy diciendo que el Departamento de Inmigración que procesó las huellas, también ellos van a reabrir. So, ellos tienen un plan poquito diferente de, de las oficinas locales. So, el plan de ellos es para reabrir en julio, pero como en la capacidad de 30 porcentaje. So, 30 porcentaje en julio. Um, en agosto, 40 porcentaje. Y en septiembre, 50 porcentaje. So, lentamente, ellos están reabriendo el proceso de, de, los, de las huellas también. Um, eso es toda la información que yo tengo de, de las huellas y de las oficinas locales. Um, en las cortes de inmigración, ellos van a reabrir, ellos tienen planes a reabrir um, el 15 de junio, so como en dos semanas más o menos. Um, ellos van a comenzar a reabrir la corte a, al público. So um, I was just saying at the tail end of that, you know, this is all the news that we know so far about immigration. We know Fingerprint, the application support centers are reopening slowly, little by little, starting in July. We know that local immigration offices will be reopening for interviews and oath ceremonies um, as of June 4th. Um, in terms of the courts, the immigration courts, the plan right now is uh, that they will be reopening as of July 15th, I'm sorry, June 15th. So in a few weeks, in two weeks. Um, I'll probably send a, a text to one of the, um, well, to the chief immigration judge, just to double check if, if that's still the plan. If there are any changes, I will certainly let you know. But as of right now, that is all the information we know in terms of reopening. The consulates, they are still closed. Those are the consulates outside of the United States. They're still closed. Remember, they're in different countries. And I'm sure the process of reopening those offices will be very difficult because it's country specific. So, estoy diciendo que um, en los consulados, en todos los países, el proceso de reabrir va a ser más complicado porque cada país tiene sus propias reglas. So, imagino que ese proceso va a ser más difícil. Hasta hoy día no tenemos información a uh, cuándo ellos van a reabrir los consulados. Ok. So, Areola tiene una pregunta. Areola has a question. She wants to know if it's definitely certain that after the police files, um, I'm thinking this is the supplement B for the U visa, is that it's good only for about six months. And that is absolutely correct. Once a supplement B has been signed, you have six months to file your U visa application with immigration. So that is correct. So la pregunta es, um, si es verdad que una persona tiene la firma de la policía por un caso de la visa de U, si es correcto que tiene que mandar su solicitud por la visa de U en, entre seis, antes de seis meses porque um, la firma va a expirar. Y eso es exactamente correcto. So tiene seis meses para mandar su solicitud después de obtener la firma de la policía por razones de la visa de U. Hello, Miss Christine. Hello, Miss Kathleen. How are you doing? It's nice to see you. Hola, Rosana. Bienvenidos. Uh, let's see what else we have. Someone is saying her mother needs to renew the green card um, and it uh, expires in October. Uh, she can, it's October, it's about six months in ahead. So probably in a month or two, she can start the process of renewing that green card. So, um, you know, six months is a little early, but four or five months before it expires is, is fairly uh, normal. Um, the, the reason I, I usually send the green card renewals um, more 
earlier than the 90 days, that's usually the standard is because they take forever sometimes. Sometimes I have green card applications pending for just a simple renewal pending for over a year. So um, probably in a month or two, she can go ahead and get that renewed. Our office is would be more than happy to help her with that. So la pregunta es, la pregunta es, si una mamá tiene residencia y necesita renovar y expira en octubre. So um, yo estaba explicando que normalmente tres, cuatro meses antes es cuando renovamos. Um, pero en ese caso, porque está tardando mucho tiempo para renovar la residencia, mi recomendación es como cuatro o cinco meses antes de expira la residencia. So, en caso de que ella está interesado, la oficina de nosotros um, puede ayudar a ella con eso. Um, who else? Hello, Kelsey. It's nice to see you. Welcome, welcome. Do we have any other questions before we jump into the proposed fee increases? Anyone else? Okay, so let's talk about um, las nuevas trámites de inmigración. So I hope that my Spanish, my numbers in Spanish is going to be okay. So first of all, one big change will be to the um, adjustment of status. So if you're here in the United States and you qualify for adjustment of status, normal fee just for that specific form is normally $12.25. That is going to jump to $21.95. So from $12.25, I'm doing the math on my phone here. From $12.25 to $21.95, that's to get your green card. And that is just to be filed with, that's just your filing fee. That doesn't include your lawyer's fee. So that is a $970 increase. That's pretty significant. That is pretty scary. So I'm just trying to tell y'all, if you have a case now, you probably want to get started with your case because these fee increases are no joke, okay? So estoy diciendo que para cambiar su estatus aquí y obtener su residencia um, aquí en los Estados Unidos, eh, trámite de inmigración ahora es $1,225, pero ellos van a cambiar a $2,000. 190 dólares. So, es casi mil dólares más para aplicar por su residencia. So, I mean, eso es, eso es muy, uh, muy grande. So, en caso de que usted o alguna persona que conoce está interesado en cambiar el estatus aquí en los Estados Unidos, si ellos cualifica es muy mejor si ellos comienzan ahora antes de cambiar los trámites de inmigración. Es casi mil dólares más. Um, next category, uh, filing and affirmative asylum cases. So before, those applications used to be free, right? Because we're talking about people who are fleeing persecution um, they have a fear. They probably left behind their entire life in their country because they're afraid and they come here to the United States. So before, when you're seeking asylum, there, there was no cost. Now they want to charge 50 bucks. Doesn't seem like a whole lot, but they, we have never, as a country, charged someone to um, obtain safety. So um, they're proposing charging a fee for that. En otra categoría, um, por casos de asilo. Recuerda que casos de asilo, esas personas están buscando la libertad aquí. Quizás ellos um, tenían mala experiencia en sus países um, y quiere 
you know, ir a los Estados Unidos para ser adelante y, y no tiene problemas con el gobierno, por la raza y, y cosas así. Um, pero, y, y en el pasado, por todo el tiempo de, del mundo de inmigración, esa aplicación fue gratis. So, ahora ellos quieren cambiar que la, la gente paga 50 dólares. So, imagino, una persona que está cayen, um, corriendo de su país por su vida, aquí comienza de nuevo en los Estados Unidos. Um, normalmente esas personas no tienen dinero. Pero ahora inmigración quiere que ellos pagan 50 dólares. DACA. If DACA um, is still around, we're waiting for a decision next month. The price is going to go from $495 to $765. That is a 55% increase. So DACA, $495, you're going all the way up to $765. Um, por casos de DACA, um, ahora es eh, como $495 dólares, pero ellos van a cambiar a $775 dólares. Eso es como 55% más. Tiene que pagar por una solicitud de DACA. No sabemos lo que va a pasar con DACA porque estamos todavía esperando la decisión de, de la Corte Suprema probablemente en junio. Ok, eso es algo muy mal también. Ciudadanía. Ahora es como 725 dólares, pero ellos quieren cambiar, momentito, 1170 plus 85. Ellos quieren cambiar a 1000 $170 dólares. $1,170 dólares de $725 dólares. Cuando yo mete mi solicitud por ciudadanía fue como $90 dólares. So I was just saying that for citizenship applications, the current fee is about $725. Um, immigration's proposed fee is jumping it all the way up to $1,255. So that is a significant increase. That is an extra $530 just to do your citizenship. So again, I am trying to prepare you for what is coming down the pike. If you or someone that you know is dilly-dallying and not really sure of whether you want to go ahead and get started, you might want to go ahead and get started because these fee increases are significant, okay? So estoy diciendo que la razón que estoy dando esa información es para ayudar a la gente. So, si usted o otra persona está pensando en comenzar un caso de inmigración, ahora es el tiempo, ¿ok? Ellos están trabajando. Um, porque en el futuro, probablemente ese verano, ellos van a cambiar los trámites. Y la diferencia en precio es, es significativa. So, ahora es el tiempo. Otras cosas que va a cambiar. Um, so, la petición ahora es 535 dólares. Va a cambiar como 20 dólares más a 555 dólares. So, that's something else. Right now, a family-based petition is um, 535 and that's going to jump up to 555 before um before when you were if you were applying as a part of a, a, an adjustment of status package you did not have to pay separately for a work permit or a travel permit okay 
that was included in the whole packet. So now work permits are going to go from $410 to $490. Okay, so that's an additional money to pay for that. So Adela está preguntando um, sobre los permisos de trabajo. So ahora es $410, dólares, pero va a cambiar $490. Dólares. Para permiso de viajar, también fue incluido en el paquete de cambiar el estatus. Eso antes fue gratis. Ahora el trámite es $585. Dólares. So eso es definitivamente un, una gran diferencia. So remember I was saying if you're doing a change of um, an adjustment of status, work permits free, travel permits free. Now you're going to have to pay $490 for the work permit and you're going to have to pay $585 for the travel permits. Before those were both free. So we're looking at Going from a marriage-based immigration adjustment of status case used to be $1,760. That is going to change to $2,750. So that's over, that's over $1,000 more expensive. So these changes are significant. Estaba diciendo que... Por un caso de matrimonio por residencia, cambiar el estatus aquí, eh, en total los trámites de inmigración fue $1,760. Ahora va a cambiar a $2,750. So eso es significativo. Y también si es eh, un caso de 245I, 245E, eso es $1,000 extra. So, $3,750. Eso es significo, significant, uh, uh, significo. So, those cases are really, really expensive. If you're doing the green card case, that's almost a $1,000 price increase. And then, God forbid, it's a 245i adjustment where there is an extra $1,000. So you're going up to just the immigration filing fees to $3,750. So that, again, is definitely a significant cost. So if you are really thinking of doing an immigration case, right now is probably a good time before significante. Gracias, amor. Um, eso es definitivamente ya es la hora. So if you're thinking about a case, please go ahead and do it because it's just going to be that much more expensive. Jasmine Molina is asking, is our office open for appointment or does it have to be over the phone? So um, we are not doing in-person consultations right now. What we're doing is video. So, you know, some of my clients or, or people who want to have consultations, we do it just like this video. We're both seeing each other on Zoom or we can do it on WhatsApp. So it's not physical, but at least I get to see your Cara and you get to see my Cara. So we are still accepting consultations at our office. So la pregunta es si la oficina del Bennett Law Center está abierto para citas o tiene que ser por teléfono. So estoy explicando que la oficina está cerrada al público por el momento todavía, um, pero si una persona quiere una cita con mí, um, podemos hacer por video. So tengo servicio de Zoom. O también si es más cómodo para la gente para hacer por WhatsApp el video. So, ustedes pueden ver mi cara y yo puedo ver tu cara. So, la oficina está abierto. Ok. ¿Qué otras preguntas tiene por mí? No sé si... I don't know if I missed any questions. Um, but do you guys have any other questions? I will answer those. So I haven't even gone through all of the filing fees. I just went through 
the most common fees that are charged. I didn't even get into the business fees or anything like that. Okay. So just wanted to throw that information out there. On top of that, let me explain to you how the world of USCIS, specifically USCIS works. USCIS is completely funded by those filing fees. OK, so the filing fees that you're paying for your case actually pays to run that entire department. The United States federal government does not give USCIS any money to run the agencies. That's different from other agencies. So, for example, the Par Department of Justice, where we have our immigration courts, they get money from the federal government in order to operate but that is not the case for uscis there has been a i say all that to say that uscis has experienced a significant decrease in the amount of cases that have been filed so remember, if they're depending on the filing fees to run the agencies, they don't have that money. It dropped about 61%. So they're budgeting, they have their budget, and now they are almost out of money. That's the news we got towards the end of last week. They are almost out of money, and USCIS is asking Congress to give them a $1.2 billion bailout because they're going to run out of money by the end of the summer without some aid because of the decline in the immigration cases. What that translates to is that in addition to the proposed fee increases, they also want to do a 10% surcharge on all immigration applications. Did you guys get that? So on top of all of the new fee increases, there is probably going to be an additional 10% charge to the applicants. And, you know, USCIS is requesting um the the money from the government think about who is in office do you think they're going to get this 1.2 billion dollar do you think this administration wants more immigration or less immigration so i'm pretty sure at some point this summer we're going to see not only the increases in fees but we're also going to see this additional 10 percent fee increase Yes. So any questions about that? I'm going to try my best to translate that in Spanish. <laughs> that was a lot. So, en español, eso va a ser muy difícil por mí porque hay muchas palabras que yo no necesariamente sabe cómo, cómo, cómo decir. So, ayúdame um, con mi vocabulario, ¿ok? So, lo que estaba diciendo es que Um, USCIS, las oficinas locales, um, ellos depende de los trámites de los aplicantes para operar, ¿ok? So, eso, ese dinero paga a la gente, los oficiales, paga la luz y, y todo, ¿ok? So, ellos están dependiendo del dinero de todas las personas que está aplicando con ellos. Eso es como ellos sobrevivir. USCIS es diferente que otras partes de inmigración porque el gobierno federal no da ningún dinero a USC, USCIS, los, uh, las oficinas um, chiquititas o locales. Eso es diferente que como um, el Departamento de Justicia donde está la Corte de Inmigración. Cada año ellos reciben dinero federal para que ellos puedan operar. So, USCIS no recibe nada como otras partes de inmigración. Ellos están dependiendo 
de, de los trámites de la gente que está aplicando con ellos por algunos beneficios. So, imagino eso. Por el virus, ellos está como bajo uh, 60, ya, yeah, 61% del dinero que ellos está, ellos pensaban que ellos van a recibir en el budget. So, ¿por qué la mayoría de la gente está diciendo que no, no quiero comenzar después del virus y todo y todo? Inmigración, ellos no están recibiendo el dinero que ellos necesitan. So, la semana pasada, USCIS estaba preguntando al gobierno federal para dar a ellos un billón dólares para ayudar a ellos. Porque en el verano, si algo no cambia, ellos no van a tener ningún dinero para operar. So, ellos casi no tienen ningún dinero. Ellos están preguntando ese gobierno para dar eh, mi, un mil, uh, mi, ya, yeah, no, un billón dólares para ayudar a ellos. Pero pensar en eso, a I mí, mean, eso es la verdad, que esa administración, ¿ustedes piensan que esa administración va a dar el dinero para ayudar a los inmigrantes, lo, las oficinas de inmigración? Probablemente no. So, el propósito de USCIS es que ellos van a, a dar nuevas precias, que yo hablo de ellos, de eso antes, pero también ellos van a, a poner otro trámite de 10 porcentaje más. So, hay dos cosas que va a pasar con los trámites de inmigración. Número uno, hay un propósito para subir los precios, como yo explica antes. Pero después también ellos quieren poner un otro trámite de 10 porcentaje más porque ellos no tienen dinero. So, espero que ustedes entiendan la razón que estoy dando eso, esa información a la gente. Por favor, si usted tiene oportunidad, para comenzar su caso, ya es la hora, porque los trámites de inmigración va a subir bastante y también otro 10 porcentaje. Hey, attorney Nayef, nice to see you. I'm here talking about these crazy fee increases that are about to happen. So not only are we looking at some fees going up over 50 or 60 or even 80%, Um, we're also looking at the possibility of a 10% surcharge because by the end of the summer, immigration may run out of money. Immigration meaning USCIS. So, hey, now is the time. If you have a case, you, you might want to get started on your case before you um, see these increases. And yes, Nieves, un billón dólares de los Estados Unidos. One billion US dollars is what they're asking the government to provide them um, so that they don't run out of money. Hey, Angelica, how are you, my darling? It's nice to see you. Uh, yeah, so that's kind of where we are. Um, I just wanted to put the information out there um, because I think people really need to understand what's going on and how this these changes will affect their pocketbook. So you can be, be prepared or even better than being prepared, be proactive. If you had a consultation with myself or another attorney and you have a viable case, it's probably a good time to go ahead and get started with your case. At least if you wanna save on some of these immigration fees. So that's kind of all I have for tonight. Just wanted to give you updates on the USCIS office openings, um, as well as these new fee increases. So does anyone else have any questions? I probably have time for one more question and then we'll get back at it tomorrow. So estoy diciendo que 
you know, si usted tiene una consulta con mí o otro abogado y dice que, ok, usted tiene caso, probablemente es buen tiempo para comenzar el caso. Pero estoy aquí, solamente quería dar la información que, you know, si es posible a comenzar su caso, por favor, comienza ahora. Um, o, you know, tiene que preparar para pagar más en, en, en el verano. So, no tenemos una cita específicamente cuando ellos van a suprir los precios, pero um, probablemente es, es, es pronto porque ellos no tienen dinero. Ok. So, yo tengo tiempo para una pregunta más, pero si no hay preguntas, um, estoy aquí mañana y viernes. So, mañana vamos a tener abogado J, uh, uh, attorney John, abogado John de mi oficina en Orlando y él va a explicar los servicios que ofrecemos um, de negocios, de um, inversiones y cosas así que hacemos en la oficina de en Orlando. So, si está interesado en eso, por favor, um, you know, ir con nosotros mañana también. So I was just saying that tomorrow we will have Attorney Jay, also known as Attorney John, from Orla our Orlando office. And he'll be talking about business immigration, investment immigration. We also are able to do um, contract law, landlord-tenant law, wills and trusts and probate. So all kinds of business issues. Um, we are able to cover those things in our Orlando office as well. So um, if you're interested in that kind of thing, that's what we'll be talking about. We don't spend a whole lot of time talking about business stuff, but that's definitely an area that we're getting into at the Bennett Law Center. So we want to keep you informed about those types of cases and types of options as well. And of course, I am definitely going to be pushing wills because in this COVID epidemic where 100,000 people have died in the last few months, are you prepared? And I'll be very honest with you. I didn't put on my big girl pants until this year, right before COVID actually, um, in February. I got my own will, my own trusts, and all of those things set up. Because if anything were to happen to me, I don't want my family um, scrambling. I want my business to be in order um, professionally and at my house. So I really want you guys to start thinking about the importance of having a will, having a living will, having um, your house in order in case something happens to you, you know, um, health directive. What if you're, you are in a vegetative state? What decisions um, would you like to make for your life? So these are things that we all need to talk about. It's uncomfortable, but it's very, very important. So tomorrow we're going to talk about all of those things. So thank you. Thank you for tuning in to episode 29 of the Immigrants Bridge Show. I'm Attorney B, and I will see you tomorrow. God bless.